Yo guys, what's up? This is Swiggy Khan once again, and this time I'm gonna show you uh, Orion the mid lane guide. This is a champion that I played out first when I started playing this game, and this champion has also been viable since its release to this day. There hasn't been a single meta where Orion has been below tier 2 champion pick. Maybe she hasn't been as popular in the mid lane perhaps, but she's always been very viable pick. A lot of that comes down to the champion kit, and that's why some champions are really hard to balance. Like Nidalee and Lee Sin are probably the main prime, prime examples where their kits are so good that it's so hard to balance. And maybe we keep nerfing them, they're still viable. And Orion is just one of those champions. So let's go over the abilities first. So the passive is called Clockwork Windup, and this deals pretty much magic damage on bonus on hit when you auto attack. This of course stacks two times and it can be used on champions and minions. This will make like glass hitting really easy and that's why I really kind of recommend Orion as a, like a starter champion because it will like the CS is everything and that's what a lot of like lower elo players don't do. They don't see us as hard. Maybe they try hard the first five minutes but as the later game goes later on they sub CSing and Orion as like a best wave clear champion is really hard, hard really easy to last hit at also. And this clockwork windup is like a lot of damage early on and this is something that you do usually where you poke auto attacks on the enemy champion. Now it doesn't matter who, you will probably out trade on damage long as you can like sidestep abilities. And the first ability is the Q and this is the command attack and this lets you like, you know, move the ball on different directions and everybody knows that that's where all the like the basis of the champion is based on. So I max out Q first, not because it deals necessarily the highest damage, but because it gives you more opportunities to position your paw in the situations where you need the ball to be. The, imagine like Oregon, like a bit of like a basketball game, Give, uh, keeps your eyes on the ball and that's where everything like happens. It's not the players where the ball is, you know, without, a play, without the basketball player having the ball, he's pretty useless in a sense. So this is why I max out the first because it will give you opportunities to use your W, E and ultimate much more frequently and it lets you like create more opportunities in short shorter span of time. And then we have dissonance and this is the pretty much a slows AOE in 250 range. Actually the animation is not very precise because it's actually like, you know, deals a bit over the range of the actual like uh, animation which is something that you probably will notice once you play more games on Orianna. This is the ability I max at second, okay? Command Dissonance deals more damage than the attack and it should be comboed. It will some take time. You can't use the Dissonance while the, the ball is traveling, by the way. So the minute the ball stops to travel, you hit the Dissonance. And this is a combo thing and, you know, it requires reflexes and everything to do it long, on time. You can't do it two seconds after the ball has, like, landed on the target, you have to do it immediately once the boss stops. And Dissonance is also giving movement speed to your allies and friends, and this will be like a very good like zoning tool in multiple sense. Uh, every time you walk up to the lane, especially when you have um, Athenes, keep spamming that until you're in your lane because you will like regain that mana throughout the walk. At least you can use it like one time while moving from base to the lane. Then we have E ability, and this is what a lot of the depth comes to is the command protect and this is pretty much shield and the why Orion is one of the strongest champions in the game is because the shield gives so much shield I mean no no it gives you so much shield amount compared to any other shield in the game and it has a pretty like good scaling it's a 40% of your AP scaling and it, the last run will give like 240 and can be end up like you know our 500 shield you know with a, like um I think like a 7 second cooldown with like CDR so or it's probably less than that, but it's a really, really, really good item. I mean, sorry, it's a really good ability. Um, when you play in a very defensive lane, if you're losing on lane, I guess you could max out product after Q, but I always max out this first. This also will give you like bonus armor and MR, which is like really, really good for like sustaining a lot, a lot of damage. And that's one of the LP parts. And of course, this MR and armor will go to your target too. So you put the ball on Galio or armor, I'm uh, sorry, you put ball on Galio or Ramus, they will get the bonus magic resistance armor and they will like do more damage. So one of the combos that I used to do is like Orion throws the ball on Galio and Galio does the ultimate. It's like extra damage because Galio scales from MR. 
And this is a very, like, a uh, ball is a very important to, you know, throw the ball onto ally and then give him the movement speed to catch opponents because Orianna is not, Orianna, Orianna is not, a, like, a very fast champion. He's, she walks kind of slow. She doesn't have, like, a high base MS unless she uses the, you know, dissonance on herself. So this is, like, a very important part. And, of course, the ultimate comboing is very important and that requires a lot of time to learn properly. And you have to, like, learn what is the max range of the Protect Ball. And what it, once, once it goes out of range, the ball will come back to you and then you'll end up ultimating yourself, which is something you don't want to do. And this requires a lot of time and remember remembering how long and how far the range goes on the Command Protect. And this is important. The Command Protect's range is higher than the uh, normal Qs. And that's something you... Well, it's not really. They are probably the same. So, it's a really important ability to, like, master... But right now there's actually a bit of a glitch where the ultimate kind of goes behind, the, uh, comes in delay or something, so it's a bit glitched. But this probably gets fixed if you're watching this, like, you know, video from one month from now or from the creation time. And let's move to the, the last ability, which is Shockwave. And this is one of the most highest damage, like, abilities in the game because, well, it just is. It has a pretty good L scaling AP ratio, which is 70%, and it has a high base damages. And one of the reasons why I forget to mention is even if you build real defensive as Orianna in the first, uh, first, first 15 minutes or something, Orianna does have like a really decent like base like damages and that's why you can play support Orianna and sometimes I do. I actually enjoy playing that quite a lot sometimes. And that is very important where in the item build because she gets a lot of burst without having that many items. And let's talk about the items. So usually what people do is they either go they start with Durance Ring and two potions of course and you have two options you go Moral Nomicon or Athens. I like to think Athens superior because it just gives you more mana and it gives MR and 90% of the matchups you will be going to mid lane will be like magic damage unless you're against Zed or Yasuo and for that reason Athens is always better. I always build sometimes Athens to Zed too because it gives me more opportunities to spam spells. In Moral Nomicon doesn't like you have to be precise your abilities, you can't spam them too much. You will running out of mana. So I think like Athens gives you more opportunities and more times to like dish out that damage. And you don't get really like when you're playing in fucking Europe or North America, you don't get fucking blues from your jungle. That doesn't happen. So that's why mana is really important. And after I build Athens I get boots and after that i will straight go to rabadons rabadons is like the best item don't build it first because it doesn't give you enough ap without another ap item and of course then the next item will be finishing your boots and then you have a choice to go i think zona is better for the defensive purposes or you can go void staff um, since Leandri is really good item right now, I think Leandri is a very like um, something you can pick over Void Staff these days, and if it works really well with Dissonance, it also like you can build Real Leandri now too, and that's a really good combination to just add a lot of damage to tanks, because you have a lot of abilities with a short cooldown that will able to like maximize the potential of Leandri and is really good against tanks, even though you don't have the person to damage. Leandri gives you that, so you have an ability to kill out those tanks pretty fast too once you move your ball around a couple of times with good CDR items, of course. Um, some people have built Lich Bane. I don't think Lich Bane is that great. And, you know, it can be... It's like extreme pushing item. That's what it is. But, you know, you get the stacks all the time though because the ball is like, you know, less than 3 seconds cooldown. Also, you have an ability, a uh, choice to go... What is the item's called name? Yeah, yeah. Gluten's Echo, yeah. I never really build it for Ariana. It gives a lot of like good movement mobility, but I don't think it's like that of a great item. It's a viable item, but I never just never happened to build it. I don't think I really need it. I don't think it's a, that dishes out that much damage. The mobility is sure nice for Ariana because you can kite around much more. But I think that's for the items. And let's talk about the runes and everything. So the masters are pretty like normal. I don't, you know, use anything like nuclear science. So I go 21, 2, 7. I get, you know, Havoc, the Devastating Strikes. Um, Arcane Plate is something that you can switch out from this one because you don't really need it on the last sitting and it's kind of useless. Even in the late game, I don't think it will really like brings any like importance. 
and then I take swiftness usually or maybe I take block depends on the situation and on the utility tree I take expanded mind and scope those two are really important because you don't want to be like face checking a ward and dying so I think that that's why scope is really good and of course ominous summoners inside which will reduce cooldowns of the spells by 10 percent and of course i have to talk about a bit of the um summer spells there's two things that i play out which one is ignite and heal you know i'm kind of notorious for playing very defensive so i usually play out with heal it lets you juke and lets you escape on lane ignite is not that needed for Ariana. it's good for like 1v1 matchups but in the end of the day, you kind of want to be on the back line and use the max range of command protect and ulti everyone and then W. So you don't always go to so close combat because you have to remember Ignite's range is lower than most of your abilities. The Q will go further away than your Ignite. So that's why I don't really like suggest taking Ignite always. It really depends on match. If you see a lot of like champions that are based on like Warwick and Mundo, maybe Ignite is really good then. And then of course teleport is an option not really good on mid lane though as we all know so ignite and heal i think me might be in my opinion the most superior ones barrier is kind of meh because you already have a shield heal gives you movement speed and gives you for even for one second that can do juke a one skill shot or ability and that's why it's really important and that's for the abilities and finalizing the like things to talk about of course we have to go to runes so there's two different ways to like play the runes so you have magic penetration reds that's what something i really use for the most part and there's not really good alternative for that armor seals and ap quints and ap per level blues or you play magic resistance flats on blues based on those two so the only thing that you will be like changing is the blues you can play AP per level quints too if you want to really go for that late game shit. And, you know, of course the AP per level will outscale around level, level 8 and 9. So that will be the same amount as level 1. I don't think Orianna needs that much. Orianna's kill ability pre-6 is kind of low. And now, of course, since I'm talking about the kill abilities and everything, I, gotta, I guess I got to talk about the counter matchups and everything. I always first pick Orianna in each game because Orianna is a champion. Once you get good enough with her, she can play into every single matchup. Is is that good of a champion? Like Zed, no problem. Yasuo, no problem. Once you come become really good and you understand like the damage output that Orianna deals with QW combo, you can like max out the range and you know how to move the ball. You can poke the enemy lane and auto attack him like. They, you're able to like be the lane dominant champion in that matchup and the shield like protects you from ignites and all ins quite well so for that reason i think orion is a really extremely good laner only problems i really had is against echo echo is kind of annoying for the one part really which is the ultimate has a slight of a casting time which is like 0.75 seconds and echo's casting time on ultimate is like half of a second or it's almost instant so the minute echo sees that you're doing an ultimate he will ultimate himself and he will nullify your ultimate pretty much and able to get health and all that so echo is not a really like great matchup for oriana it's kind of problem you can beat him but it will be very hard without jungle assistance and it's a bit too shaky matchup but every other matchup in the game is doable in my opinion she can be extremely punishing against melee champions or people mispositioning. And that's something you really need to learn on this champion. And that will take a lot of process and time to learn to punish the lane opponent for like mispositioning on lane or trying to CS. The minute she comes in range, poke and harass her. You got good like mana. Like once you got Athens and like Chalice, you are able to like spam that QW all the time. And you're able to poke them out of lane or kill them, push it possibly and a lot of people don't respect Orianna's like power spikes and like ability damage and that kind of what's usually surprises them off guard and hopefully you enjoyed this guide i tried to talk about different things and different methods out about to play Orianna. a bit different than i did in the past but hopefully this was somewhat you'll learn something from this guide today and thanks for watching once again subscribe check out my other guides 
and see you guys later on the next video. Cheers.